What's going on guys, Anthony from Chronometer Check here, and today we're gonna do kind of a budget panda dial chronograph roundup slash comparison. We're gonna be taking a look at four different watches, the Parnas, Daytona, the Alpha Daytona, the Orient Panda Neo 70s, and the Dan Henry 1964 Gran Turismo. Quick wrist check today, I'm wearing my Orient Sun and Moon V3 blue dial. I think that blue dial is absolutely gorgeous. I don't have too many blue dials in my collection. I have maybe one or two. And this watch definitely proved to me that I want slash need more. So I've been eyeing the Blue Alpinist recently. I know the prices are kind of annoyingly high right now um, on the gray market. But anyway, I've been eyeing one for a while. And if a price ever does get low enough to where it's worth it for me to snag it, then that's probably next on my list, to be honest. I might even flip a few pieces for it. I don't know. Anyway, so today we have four different watches in kind of different categories. They each kind of offer something a little bit different. So starting from cheapest to the most expensive, first we have the Parnas Daytona. Now it did come on a bracelet. The bracelet it came on is actually right here. I do have another one, obviously, this blue kind of Tiffany dial pan, uh, platinum, dial, whatever. Uh, Parnas Daytona also, same exact watch, just it this watch did come on the same bracelet as this. I'm just showing you the bracelet. It's actually pretty good quality. Not bad at all for the price. The price is around $100. But as far as the watch itself, there are a couple of things I really like about it. So three out of these four watches are hybrid Mecha Quartz watches, including this one here. This one is by far the cheapest out of the bunch. And by far, I mean like under half of any of these other options. And it's actually not bad at all for the price because what you do get um, you do get the hybrid Mecha Quartz movement. You get a sapphire crystal and a ceramic bezel, which you see just kind of really, really pops and makes the watch look very, very nice. It is 39 millimeters, which is a very reasonable size. I like that. It's it's not too small to where it kind of looks eminent, but it doesn't look like a, a vintage smaller watch. It does look like a modern watch, but reasonably sized. And on my seven inch wrist, excuse me, I do have it on deploying class right now. I think it wears just absolutely perfectly. This is like my sweet spot. I think 39 millimeters is perfect for me. The, the glass is just so clear. I don't actually know if it has any AR coating. I don't even think it does, but some crystals that you get with no AR coating, particularly like even the Seiko Sarb 033, it's, it's just looks so cloudy and you don't really get a good view of the dial a lot of the time. On this watch, that's one of the things that kind of amazed me. So maybe there is AR coating, I'm not sure. Anyway, very, very nice. Um, It shows off that kind of glossy, silvery, milky white dial very, very nicely. And I think it's just a beautiful configuration. It is based on a modern Rolex Daytona, super modern and beautiful design. It doesn't get any points for originality, but it definitely gets some points for beauty and it looks really, really nice. It does look great on the bracelet and the bracelet is not bad at all. It is brushed and polished. It does have a chronograph function as do all these chronographs. That's kind of the point of this video. And it is a panda dial because as you can see, it's a panda dot. And this one comes in at around a hundred ish dollars, depending on when and where you find it. You can get it from the Parnas site. You could probably find it on eBay. You could probably find it on AliExpress. Um, do a little hunting around, see, see where you get the cheapest price. Next up, we have the Alpha Daytona. So this is also based on a Rolex Daytona, but a more vintage kind of a 1960s uh, Rolex Daytona design. I mean, 60s, 70s. Anyway, yeah, more the vintage inspired. And I think it does it does that very, very well. So one thing that's different right off the bat about this watch, this one also did come on a bracelet, by the way, but I changed it for this rally leather strap. I think it works really, really well. I think it's beautiful combination for this. It's my favorite combination for this that I found so far. So what's different about this watch from the rest of them, this one is actually fully mechanical and it costs just as much as these other two watches here, which are not mechanical. These are also hybrid Mecha Quartz watches fully mechanical for about 250 260 dollars kind of nuts it does use the seagull or it's it is uh only manual wand it uses the seagull st19 movement i want to say which is a very respectable movement because the same movement they use in the seagull 1963 watch which is a column wheel chronograph for the price that's a really good deal let me tell you the movement is solid is very robust they used to use it in the chinese military or at least a variation thereof in the Siegel 1963 watch, and you have the same movement here in a really nice packaging. So you do have a kind of an acrylic uh, outer bezel with a tachometer, second hand on the left side is actually sweeping smoothly. 
as is the chronograph hand. And there's the difference between the Mecha Quartz and the, the fully mechanical watches. So for example, let's take the Mecha Quartz Dan Henry. If we start the chronograph, the chronograph hand sweeps smoothly, but if this did have a ticking second hand, it would only tick, it would not sweep because it is a Mecha Quartz watch. But with the fully mechanical watch, even the second hand is sweeping smoothly, as you see on that left hand subdial. So also has a, a dome crystal, a domed acrylic crystal that is also probably gonna get scratched up. Mine hasn't at all yet, um, which is really, really nice. I've been actually worn this a ton. This is not like a watch I babied. I don't see this one going anywhere in my collection, most likely. It is a manual wind, fully mechanical chronograph, and that dome crystal is super nice. I love the dial, etc. About $250, $260. Once again, the bracelet was kind of junk. Uh, which seems to be the case with these kind of budget-minded watches, but that's okay. Next up, we have the Orient Neo 70s Panda Dial Chronograph. I did do a full review on this. I am going to get rid of it, and there are a couple of reasons, not because it's a bad watch by any means, but just doesn't really do it for me. It's actually the biggest of the bunch at 42 millimeters, so it's, it wears a little bit on the larger side, a little bit thinner. I think it's almost 12 millimeters, but keep in mind, it's not mechanical. A little bit wider in diameter, which just doesn't really do it for me, unfortunately. Very, very nice looking watch. Otherwise, it is the most original watch out of any of the you see here. It's the most original design, whereas the other are kind of homaging or uh, you know paying homage to more classic designs. So like the Rolex Daytonas over there, or uh, even a with the Dan Henry. It is kind of loosely based on a vintage Omega chronograph. Points for, for originality, very cool watch also. It is a Mecha Quartz, also costs about $250, $260, depending on where and when you find it. Bracelet is okay, kind of hollow and rattly, nothing special. I did a full review on this, so I really don't know what to say that I haven't been said before, but if you want a more original design, this is the, this is the way to go. And last but not least, we have my newest acquisition and kind of my newest love is this Dan Henry 1964 Gran Turismo. Ooh, baby. It is also Mecha Quartz with a domed crystal. You see a very, very vintage inspired styling. It is the smallest of the bunch at only 38 millimeters in diameter, but it is kind of thick on the lug to lug. I think it's about, I wanna say 46, 47, 48. This is off the top of my head, so please don't quote me on that. Very, very nice looking dial. Something that kind of surprised me when I got this watch in is that the dial is kind of, kind of a warm silver, whereas the Alpha Daytona, let's try to get it side by side. So the Alpha Daytona is kind of like a cool silver, if that makes sense, whereas more, almost like a blue-ish hue, a very icy, Hue, whereas this silver dial is a little bit more almost champagne colored, and I don't think that's a bad thing. It just lo looks and wears a little bit different because of that. It actually looks a lot dressier. Of course, it does have kind of the straight lugs and the, the kind of very simple rounded case, the dome crystal. It does have a very dressy uh, element, whereas the Alpha Daytona is a lot more sporty. It might be better for an everyday watch, depending on who you are, what you wear, etc. if you do tend to dress up a lot more formally and this might be a better option for you. I did put it on this kind of really nice, surprisingly nice for the price, faux alligator strap. It is uh, embossed, so not real alligator, but I think it just works really well to make the wash a little bit more interesting. It is kind of matte and not very shiny, so it's not super dressy, but it's it does dress it up a little bit at the same time. So yeah, overall just really nice. I did get the bi-compacts model of this watch. They also do have one with a third subdial, for the, at the bottom here, for the seconds hand, which is actually why I got this one in particular, because I did not want the ticking seconds hand. So i actually gotten probably the most compliments on this, if not the blue dial Parnas Daytona. But overall, I think these watches are all kind of awesome in their own right. They're all very, very affordable. They all have something a little bit different going for them. The Parnas Daytona, the cheapest of the bunch at about a hundred-ish dollars, sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel, Really nice little package for the price and decent bracelet even that I showed you before. The Orient Neo 70 is the most original of the bunch. It is a little bit big and a little bit oversized compared to the kind of retro charm that these watches tend to have. Um, so maybe something to consider if you like the smaller watches, this one might not be for you. And that's why I'm getting rid of it in my collection, but it does have the most original design out of the bunch, not really homaging any other watch. The Alpha Daytona, the only fully mechanical and for about the same price as these other two. So that right there is, uh, you know, if that's what you prefer, then this is really the only option for you.
And the Dan Henry is the Dan Henry. It is a micro brand. It is beautiful. It's you're getting a lot uh, for your money in terms of finishing and just overall looks and aesthetics. If you really only care about the way it looks, I think the Dan Henry might be the way to go if you like the styling. Um, this one, the Parnas also just really looks very, very sharp in person because of the ceramic bezel, sapphire crystal. Thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. It really helps kind of get my channel out there. And, you know, I'm kind of like a really small um, channel at the moment. And I do appreciate all the support you guys have given me so far. And subscribe if you want to see more. And if not, that's perfectly okay. No need to do anything. Or you can dislike it if you want. That's fine, too. Thanks for watching. See ya.